Hey guys, welcome back to 22LR, where we focus on the competitive side of the rimfire world. We are back out here at the range today, this Saturday, July 30th, practicing the August course of fire. So NRL 22 Management put out that, that course of fire this week. So we're out here practicing that and producing a video so you guys have got some insights on how I'm gonna tackle these stages on this next month's match. So today we are actually gonna be giving you some bonus content. Uh, I've got a new lab radar and I'm going to be comparing that lab radar directly against my Magneto Speed V3. I feel like both of these pieces of equipment are reliable sources of muzzle velocity data, but today I'm setting out to prove it um, because I think that either, either device will give you reliable data for your trajectory calculations. Let's get out there. We are gonna be shooting some Norma TAC-22. Now this stuff usually runs about 1100 to 1120 feet per second, which is kind of fast for this kind of shooting but I think it'll be perfect for checking these two chronographs against each other. I've got a mag loaded up here. I've got my eyes and ears on because there's some, some big guns getting shot down the range here. So we're gonna go ahead and send some and cross-reference these two pieces of equipment, see how they work together. Reach up here and arm this guy. All right, let's go ahead and send one. I fired a test shot and I've got a result on both the magneto speed and the lab radar. So let's go ahead and send a few more and see if these see if these velocities are consistent between both the pieces of equipment. That's it. Between all 17 shots fired, the lab radar was consistently about one to three feet per second faster than the magneto speed. I think we proved that both pieces of equipment are reliable for gathering your velocity data. So I think you pick what fits your budget, buy that, and at every match, check your velocities. All right. Let's set up some stages and have some fun. First up, thunder down under. We have two inch at 65 yards, a three inch at 85 yards. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the targets in the following manner. Any leg, far target with three shots. Any tip, near target with two shots. A different leg, far target with three shots. A different shooter. tip, near Ready? target with two Ready. shots. Note, when shooting three, from the legs, two, no rear one, support engage. or equipment may be used to support the rifle. All right, guys, here we go with thunder from down under. This one is going to be fun. We're going to be shooting from two tank trap tips and two tank trap legs. We're going to start the stage off on the legs. Now legs are always a bit tricky because your bag is naturally wanting to slide down that angle, and especially when you put a 15 pound rifle on it. But that's why we do these things. We do these things to get better at shooting from weird positions like off the side of a tank trap leg. We're going to transition up here to the tank trap tips. This should go pretty fast. Legs spread out nice and wide. Elbow down, good clean connection with the heel of my palm on my bag. Break those two shots, and then we're going to transition here over to the other tank trap leg. Some guys are going to want to shoot this from prone. I decided I wanted to shoot this from a sitting position. Sitting just seemed to be relatively comfortable, so I wanted to run it that way. Plus, it made it so that I had less movement when I needed to transition to the tank trap tips. You notice I took my time on those shots from the legs. That's because I wasn't perfectly stable like I can get when I build my base nice and wide from the tank trap tips. All right, wrapping this up, we got a couple more shots from the tank trap tip and we're gonna get on to the next stage. Uh, 
All right, next up, there's a hole in my bucket. We have a one at 45, a one and a half at 60, a two at 95. We're gonna start standing, rifle on all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the targets with one shot, hit or miss, in the following manner. Prone, left of the bucket, near to far. On the rim of the bucket, middle, then near. Prone, on the right side of the bucket, near to far, but support side. On the rim of the bucket, middle, then near, also support side. Note, when shooting from the bucket, a bipod cannot be deployed where the feet are on the ground or on the bottom of the bucket. Support side means support eye, shoulder, and hand. All right, guys, here we go with there's a hole in my bucket. Now, this one starts off real easy. Strong side, support it. But it ratchets up the difficulty pretty quick with this open-ended bucket. Now, I don't really have any good tips for you as far as shooting from an open-ended bucket. It is, it is extremely wobbly. The bucket isn't exactly rigid, so trying to build a good, solid, stable position on something that is wobbly presents its own bit of challenges. We're going to go through this. I'm, I'm trying to be nice and slow and steady and stable, but unfortunately, you know, that wobble into the bucket ended up costing me a miss there. Uh, but we transition over here to support side. Now, I think everybody should practice support side shooting. I think it, overall it's going to make you a better shooter because we don't really, we're not supposed to have weak side, right? We're only supposed to have a side that supports us. And shooting support side does develop a whole different fundamental that you didn't really think you needed to practice until you started shooting in RL-22. So we're going to go through, we're going to hit all three of these targets, and then we're going to transition support side back up to that open-ended bucket. Now that's where things I felt got really weird on this stage. Um, it was not, I didn't find it fun to shoot from uh, the open-ended bucket. Strong side, let alone support side. This was a whole other animal that I really wasn't anticipating. But I do my best. I get both of these connections and we move on to our next stage. Wow, right at the buzzer. Okay. Next up, never leave your wingman. We have a KYL rack from one to quarter inch at 42 yards and a two inch at 69 yards. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will assume a prone supported position with only two rounds in their magazine and engage the one inch KYL rack with two shots. The shooter will then retrieve their spare mag from behind the firing line and engage the targets in the following order. Far target with one shot, KYL rack from large to small with one shot each. Far target with one shot, then KYL from large to small with one shot each. All right, guys, here we go with Never Leave Your Wingman. I was struggling a little bit in the beginning of the stage getting that magazine to feed reliably. I think I finally got it squared away here. We're going to get started. This one's fun. The uh, KYL racks are always a good time. I particularly like when we get to do KYL racks and then another target at a further distance. I like the transition between two targets like that. It makes it so that you have to do holdovers, and I'm kind of a big fan of holdovers. In this stage, we got to plant a magazine, you know, back behind us, get up and run back, grab the magazine, and then run back up and load it in our gun. Those kind of things are, they're gimmicky, but they are also good for you know learning how to get up off your rifle and get back to your rifle pretty quickly we got to walk down this KYL rack so we're gonna start at one go to three quarter go to half go to quarter and one thing I can't stress enough with KYL racks is how important it is to really take your time when you get down to that half inch and that quarter inch target sometimes a mental game that you can play to help yourself gain some confidence when you're shooting at such a small target is to remember that the bullet is 0.224 the target is 0.25 so you've got almost three quarters of an inch to play with because all you have to do is really nick that quarter inch kyl rack you just have to touch it to get it to count as a hit and that's just something I tell myself, hey, dude, you don't have to smash this thing and make it spin around 15 times. You just have to nick it. We ran through that quick. Let's move on to the next one. Clean. Okay, next up is rung out. Shooter ready? We have a three inch and 100 yards. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action and open. Now. On the start signal, the shooter three, will engage the two, target with one, one shot engage. from each ladder rung, hit or miss, move on. The shooter will start from the highest ladder rung they can safely reach and work their way down, up, and back down again without skipping for 10 shots or till time expires. 
All right, guys, here we go with Rung Out. This stage is all about movement. It's about getting yourself, your gear, and your rifle into 10 different positions to take 10 different shots at the same target. Learning this fundamental of precision shooting is something that will carry you a long way in this sport. You have got to get efficient at your body movements, at your gear movement, and getting your target reacquired once you've made that movement. You got to get good at that if you expect to do well in this sort of sport. This is a stage that is going to teach those those kind of fundamentals. Something that I typically do when I shoot from the bottom rung of a ladder is I like to go prone, but when I have 10 movements that I have to make, I just don't have time to go prone. So I decide that I'm just gonna shoot that from my knees and tuck myself down and break that shot. Uh, we're just gonna go right back up the ladder here. Ladders are a lot of fun to shoot from because of the various positions that you have to build. Uh, something that I learned from the guys over at Long Range Tactics, and I've always mentioned this anytime I shoot from a ladder in, in previous videos. Jose over there, he put together a video showing how to lock your rifle in onto a ladder rung using a little bit of pressure on the top of the optic and then pinch the ladder rung between your forefinger and your thumb and that really does give you a lot of stability and make these long range shots from a ladder very doable. Started. Last stage, we have two tire for this shoot. We have a two and a half inch at Three, 85 yards. Two, We're going to start engage. standing, rifle all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target in the following order and manner. Upright tire for two shots. Flat tire on the right side, three shots. Upright tire, three shots. Flat tire on the left side, two shots. The shooter will yell done to stop the timer. Note, this is the time stage where we earn 0.1 bonus points per second left on the clock. All right, guys, let's really get going on this stage. Too tired for this shoot. Now, I'm going to be honest. This stage was the most frustrating stage of the day for me. I felt like I needed to move fast, but I think that was a mistake that I shouldn't have made. Um, I'm not going to get any bonus points if I miss shots. So slowing down on this stage and not trying to move quickly and actually letting those tires really settle in and stop moving might be the key to cleaning this. I shot this stage probably six times in practice and I never could clean it. It just wasn't doable for me. Hopefully it's doable for you, but I really struggled on this thing. And I think a lot of it was me rushing through the stage, trying to get through it and, and trying to clean it and trying to get those bonus points. Um, so a bit of advice uh, when you shoot this, if you haven't already shot it yet, is slow down, take your time, try to make your impacts count because if you miss one, those bonus points are really for naught. All right, guys. Well, that is it for us out here today. We have shot the entire August monthly course of fire. And I'm going to be honest, that was deceptively challenging. Um, I struggled to clean any of those stages. There is a lot of tricky positional work in this course of fire. So big shout out to the course designer. Um, that, was, that was challenging. Um, it was a lot of fun, but definitely pushed definitely pushed you as a shooter. Um, and I guess that's what we need, right? That's what we need to get better. We need to be pushed. We need to be challenged. We need to shoot harder positions, smaller targets. Uh, that's, that's how you improve your skill set. So, uh, I appreciate you guys coming out here and joining me on this fine, beautiful Saturday in Northern Colorado. Uh, it was a great day to be out here shooting. The winds weren't too terribly bad. Uh, do me a favor, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, uh, share the video with with, a butt, with your shooting buddies. Um, hit that like button, leave me a comment, let me know if I'm doing something stupid. I guarantee you, if you watch my video close enough, you're going to find something stupid that I did. And uh, I'm not opposed to being called out on it. Um, I need Sometimes I need coaching, and you know this community is really good about offering good bits of advice. So... It's a lot of fun to get out here and make these videos, and I do it I do it for your entertainment and because I love getting out here and shooting. So um, I'm going to wrap it up for the day. 
I will catch you guys on the next one. As always, guys, thank you for watching. I apologize about this one being late. My wife had hip surgery. I've had to fill a lot of roles while she's been down, but I really do appreciate your patience. I hope to see you out on the range.